fourth lecture in the series on ECG basics. We will start with ventricular arrhythmias. Ventricular ectopic beats are also known as ventricular premature beats or complexes. VPB or VPC, sometimes PVC, premature ventricular complexes. They originate mostly due to re-entrant circuits within the ventricles, but could also be due to triggered activity. Ventricular premature beats are easily recognized on the ECG by their wide bizarre QRS complexes, not preceded by a P wave. Secondary STD changes in the form of ST depression and T wave inversion when the QRS is dominantly positive are also seen. VPC is usually followed by a full compensatory pause, meaning that the interval between the previous sinus beat and the next sinus beat will be exactly double that of the sinus cycle length. This is because the VPC does not reset the sinus cycle, unlike the supraventricular ectopic, which gets conducted to the sinus node earlier and resets the sinus cycle. Basic rhythm in this ECG is sinus rhythm at around 60 per minute. There are two wide QRS complexes seen in lead to rhythm strip. Both are of similar morphology, hence they are called monomorphic VPC. Monomorphic VPCs are usually unifocal and have same coupling interval. Coupling interval is the interval between the onset of the previous normal QRS complex and the ectopic QRS complex. Ventricular ectopic is identified by the absence of preceding P wave, bizarre wide QRS and secondary STT changes. It is usually followed by a full compensatory pause, meaning that the sum of the coupling interval and the compensatory pause will be equal to twice the regular sinus cycle length marked as RR in the ECG. Compensatory pause is the interval between the onset of the ventricular ectopic beat and the succeeding sinus beat. The full compensatory pause is because the ventricular ectopic beat usually does not reset the sinus cycle. This is because the next sinus discharge would have already occurred before the ventricular ectopic impulse gets conducted up through the atrioventricular node with the usual delay. Ventricular ectopics with different morphologies can be called polymorphic VPC. Polymorphic VPCs are more likely to lead on to more complex ventricular arrhythmias. They usually have different coupling intervals as they originate from different fossa in the ventricle. Polymorphic VPC were also called as multifocal VPCs. One classical type of polymorphic VPC is the bidirectional VPC with alternating QRS complexes being positive and negative. Bidirectional VPCs are the forerunners of bidirectional ventricular tachycardia which is one of the types of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Monomorphic VPC usually lead on to monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. VPCs with short coupling interval are more likely to precipitate ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation. When the R wave of a VPC falls on the T wave of the previous cycle, it is known as R on T phenomenon, which is a forerunner of ventricular fibrillation. This is because the initial part of the descending limb of the T wave is the most vulnerable phase in the electrical cycle, which is more prone for arrhythmia. Initial two VPCs in this ECG are isolated VPCs, while the last two occur in rapid sequence as a couplet. VPC couplets may be a forerunner of ventricular tachycardia. Isolated VPCs and the couplet are followed by a compensatory pause. All the VPCs have same morphology, monomorphic, indicating the same focus of origin, unifocal. Unifocal VPC usually have the same coupling interval. The couplet occurs at a cycle length of 400 milliseconds. If this progresses to a ventricular tachycardia, expected rate will be 150 per minute. Two beads in the couplet do not have identical morphology in all leads. Have a look at leads V4 to V6. This may indicate either different fossa of origin or different conduction paths in the ventricle. 
Moreover, the inter ectopic interval is shorter than the coupling interval of the VPCs. Complex ventricular ectopy is the occurrence of multiple bizarre QRS complexes without preceding P waves and having different morphologies and coupling intervals. Since they have different morphologies, they are unlikely to be amenable for radio frequency catheter ablation as they originate from multiple foci. Complex ventricular ectopy occurring frequently over a long period of the order of a decade can predispose to tachycardiomyopathy. Tachycardiomyopathy is a condition in which long-standing fast heart rate predisposes to left ventricular dysfunction. The dyssynchrony of the left ventricular contraction due to altered sequence of activity during ventricular ectopy is an important contributor to the left ventricular dysfunction. On the other hand, complex ventricular ectopy can be an association of familial dilated cardiomyopathy as well. When each sinus beat is followed by a VPC, it is called ventricular bigeminy. It is associated with pulses bigeminous. In the yester years, when digoxin usage was high, ventricular bigeminy used to be an important manifestation of digoxin toxicity to look for. Bidirectional VPC and bidirectional ventricular tachycardia in which consecutive VPC had QRS complexes of opposite polarity were considered classical features of digitoxicity. When every two consecutive sinus beats are followed by a VPC, it is called ventricular trigeminy. Similarly, when three consecutive sinus beats are followed by a VPC, it is called ventricular quadrigeminy. These are associated with corresponding changes in the pulse. The pulse of a VPC is usually of low volume so that sometimes it may be hardly felt. In some cases of ventricular bigeminy, this may lead to miscounting of pulse rate and the pulse rate will be counted as half the heart rate and bradycardia alert issued by the ward staff. The pulse following the compensatory pause has a higher volume because of better ventricular filling during the pause and enhanced inotropy. Multiple wide bizarre QRS complexes without preceding P waves are ventricular ectopic beats in this ECG. Since they have different morphologies, they are called polymorphic VPC. Some of the couplets are seen to be bidirectional, bidirectional VPC, while others are unidirectional. In addition, there are QS complexes in V1 and V2 with a slightly coved ST segment and T wave inversion, reminiscent of an old myocardial infarction. Bidirectional VPC and bidirectional ventricular tachycardia can be seen in digoxin toxicity, anderson tavel syndrome, the congenital long QT syndrome 7, catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, myocarditis, myocardial infarction, and metastatic cardiac tumors. Reference for bidirectional ventricular tachycardia ECG showing ventricular ectopic bigeminy Clinical findings will be pulses bigeminous and intermittent cannon waves as alternate P waves are falling on the ST segment. When P waves fall on the latter part of the QRS, ST segment or T waves, cannon waves can be expected as QT interval roughly represents the electrical systole of the ventricle. Diastole ends and systole starts at the peak of the R wave. When P wave occurs during ventricular systole, Atrioventricular walls are closed and cannon wave occurs. In the tracing, P waves are seen as distortions in the contour of the ST segment of the ectopic beat. The distortion is exactly midway between the preceding and succeeding P waves of the sinus beats which are of narrow QRS. Ventricular ectopics are characterized by wide bizarre complexes which are premature and not usually preceded by P waves. Monitor screenshot showing ventricular premature complexes occurring in a trigeminal sequence. Two sinus beats followed by a ventricular ectopic beat. Ventricular trigeminy or VPC trigeminy. T waves of the sinus beats are widened. VPC occur after the next sinus P wave and can be called late diastolic VPC.
Late diastolic VPC can occur during reperfusion of occluded coronary artery in acute myocardial infarction. They can be followed by accelerated idioventricular rhythm, a classical reperfusion arrhythmia. Three or more ventricular complexes with wide QRS occurring at a rate more than 100 per minute is taken as ventricular tachycardia or VT. Ventricular tachycardia is one of the two common potentially life-threatening serious ventricular arrhythmias, latter being ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular tachycardia lasting more than 30 seconds or requiring termination prior to that due to hemodynamic compromise is called sustained ventricular tachycardia. Shorter spells of ventricular tachycardia are called non-sustained ventricular tachycardia or NSVT. If all the QRS complexes in a VT have same morphology, then it is called monomorphic ventricular tachycardia (MMVT). If the QRS morphology is varying, it is called polymorphic ventricular tachycardia (PMVT). The classical type of polymorphic VT associated with QT interval prolongation is called tossad the points because it resembles twisting of points in an ECG strip with QRS morphology transitioning slowly from positive to negative and back. Tossad the point is an important toxicity of many drugs which prolong the QT interval. Hence, it has been made mandatory to test the effect on QT interval of any new drug before approval is granted by the National Drug Control Agency. Tossad can also occur in the setting of myocardial ischemia, complete heart block, and electrolyte imbalances like hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia. Even though three ventricular ectopics in succession with a rate above 100 per minute qualifies for calling it a non-sustained ventricular tachycardia run, it is often called a salvo of ventricular ectopics. ECG showing VPC salvo. The original meaning of the word salvo is a series of shots fired in rapid sequence from a gun or simultaneously from multiple guns. Isolated VPC seen subsequently. QS complexes are seen in V1 to V3 suggesting a previous myocardial infarction. Ventricular ectopic beats originating from the right ventricular outflow tract is one of the commonest forms of benign ventricular ectopy. But at times, RVOT can be the origin of a ventricular tachycardia which could be either paroxysms of non-sustained ventricular tachycardia as seen here or sustained ventricular tachycardia. RVOT VT can be induced by exercise and has a left bundle branch block morphology. Wide QRS which is negative in V1 and positive in V6 with inferior axis positive in leads 2, 3 and AVF. ECG showing VT occurring during an exercise test. It is a monomorphic VT with QRS negative in V1 and positive in lead 2 and V5 suggestive of RVOT VT. Monitor screenshot showing frequent runs of non-sustained VT. Inset shows a short segment in more detail. Dissociated P waves are seen very well indicating the ventricular origin of the tachycardia. P waves are seen before the 6th and 11th QRS complexes with different PR intervals indicating that they are dissociated P waves. Here the P waves are of sinus origin and do not get conducted to the ventricles because ventricle is already activated by a faster ventricular rhythm. Retrograde conduction from the ventricle into the AV junction and anterograde conduction from the sinus node gets cancelled off and this is a form of indifference AV dissociation. Belhasen's VT is idiopathic fascicular ventricular tachycardia originating from the left posterior fascicle. It is responsive to verapamil and is an ablatable VT. It is also known as posterior fascicular tachycardia. Belhasen and associates described a ventricular tachycardia responding to verapamil unlike the usual ventricular tachycardias which respond to lignocaine. It may be noted that verapamil is conventionally a drug used for treatment of supraventricular rather than ventricular tachycardia.
even though other authors had reported on ventricular tachycardias with relatively narrow QRS complex originating from the posterior fascicle, it was Belhasen and colleagues who suggested this form of ventricular tachycardia as a separate entity. Classical ECG pattern in Belhasen's VT is right bundle branch block pattern with left axis deviation as it originates from the left posterior fascicle. Tachycardia originating from left anterior fascicle has right bundle branch block pattern with right axis deviation and that originating from the left septal fascicle has right bundle branch block pattern with normal axis. 12 lead ECG of idiopathic vesicular ventricular tachycardia showing classical right bundle branch block pattern with leftward axis morphology suggestive of posterior vesicular origin. References on vesicular ventricular tachycardia Accelerated idioventricular rhythm or AIVR is spontaneous rhythm originating from the ventricle which is faster than the usual idioventricular rhythm in complete heart block which has a rate of around 20 to 40 per minute. AIVR typically has a rate just above 100 per minute but is slower than the usual ventricular tachycardia. It is sometimes called as slow VT. AIVR is considered as a classical reperfusion arrhythmia which occurs after successful reperfusion of a coronary occlusion either by thrombolysis or percutaneous coronary intervention. Usually, it is a self-limited arrhythmia and needs no treatment. ECG strips showing accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Regular retrograde P waves are seen in the upper tracing. In the lower tracing, retrograde P waves manifest as slight irregularity in upsloping ST segment. Ventricular fibrillation VF is a life-threatening arrhythmia which leads to death unless promptly corrected by electrical defibrillation, direct current or DC shock. In VF, the electrical activity is so disorganized that no ventricular contraction is possible and ventricle remains in a still state of cardiac arrest. Ventricular fibrillation is recognized on the ECG as a highly disorganized electrical activity. Each wave has a different morphology. When multiple simultaneous leads are available as in this case, the morphology is different between the leads as well. Here it is a coarse ventricular fibrillation. As time passes after the onset of VF, the initially coarse VF degenerates into fine VF. If you are noting fine VF on the monitor in case of cardiac arrest, it usually means that some time has passed after the onset of VF. Fine VF is more difficult to convert electrically by defibrillation. Often a few cycles of cardiopulmonary resuscitation and administration of adrenaline may convert fine VF back to coarse VF and make it more amenable to defibrillation. Usually, fine VF indicates underlying metabolic acidosis which may improve with CPR. Look out for the next video on ECG changes in coronary artery disease.